A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. When you come back to another video. So we all know such situations. We are walking down the Champs-Élysées trying to find the next five guys. I mean, just like the next regular guy next to you. All trying to find the next five guys. And then suddenly a crackhead comes by asking you if 3579 is divisible by 69. And then you don't have an answer. It's devastating. It's something that you don't want to experience. But our educational system just doesn't allow for nice numbers to be covered yet when it comes to divisibility rules. This is my role here on YouTube, trying to find out what the divisibility rule for the number 69 is. And this is what we are going to do today. It's going to be very nice. And now we are going to dive right in. Now, suppose we have some kind of number. Okay, let's say 138. Okay, that's that's 2 times 69 if you didn't notice. So 138. And deriving divisibility rules is pretty similar, especially for um, numbers which are odd in nature. For example, 69 or um, 7. <laughs> That's just one of many odd numbers. Why did I think about an odd number for so long? Never mind. So what we are going to do is we are going to at first split our original number up. 138 is the same as saying we have 130 plus 8. And now you are going to notice, no matter which number we take, as long as it has at least two digits, and if we want to look for divisibility by 69, it has to have at least two digits, obviously, then we can break the number up into something which is a multiple of 10 plus the last digit, which we find in the number. Meaning this right here is of the form 13 times um, 10, <laughs> not 0, plus 8. Now, we can generalize this idea, as mentioned before, as long as our number has at least two digits, we can decompose it like this. Let's call this number in the front A, which is basically just a part without the last digit, and then we also add the last digit to it. Meaning we can generalize our problem of divisibility by 69 into the following. We are going to see if a number of the form 10A plus B is divisible by 69. And what we are going to do now is we are going to um, transform this or algebraically ma manipulate this expression into something which is partly divisible by 69 and the other one is going to be just defined recursively in a proof to see if this last part is also going to be divisible by 69 overall. Now there are many ways to turn this into something that is divisible by 69. As a matter of fact, there should be infinitely many divisibility rules for every number out there, um, except for zero, obviously, for every natural number. Um, so meaning we have a lot of options at our hands. So what we could do, for example, is we could um, add 68b and subtract it once again. You can just add 68b and leave it at that because this would um, alter our original expression. We don't want that. We want to leave it how it is. And if you have 68 bananas and you're going to take 68 bananas away from it, you're going to have zero bananas. And adding zero ban bananas to your pile of bananas and apples really doesn't change anything, am I right? Meaning what we're going to end up with right now is an expression of the form 10a. Then we are going to get minus 68b plus 69b. Obviously, you're going to notice that 69b is a number which is divisible by 69. So meaning, in order for our original number to, to be divisible by 69, we also need this first part to be divisible by 69. You could say this right here is already our algorithm. Okay, You could say what you can do to determine if a number is divisible by 69 is you are going to take the last digit away, you are going to multiply this first part by 10, that's the expression 10a, and then you are going to subtract Seven, uh, 68 times the last digit from it. That's not a good algorithm. We can do better than that. Namely, what you're going to notice is it really doesn't matter if we factor out a part, this is not going to change the argument that the first part needs to be divisible by 69. Meaning we can factor out a factor of 2 because it's divisible by 2 both parts. Then we are going to get 2 times 5a minus, and then we are going to get half of 68, which is 34. I mean, this is a better divisibility rule already, obviously, uh, and obviously plus 69b. You are going to take 5 times what you have in the front, okay, 5 times 13. Then you are going to subtract 34 times the last digit from it. This is still not a good algorithm. I mean, 
trying this out in your head while the crackhead is, is looking for its next overdose, okay? Um, and telling him on the go, if it's divisible by, by 69, I couldn't do this, especially for the 34th uh, multiple of, <laughs> of the last digit. That's not something that we want, but you can do better. That's not the only way to get yourself a 69 up here with the B. What we can do is we can go the other route and say we're going to subtract 69B from it, meaning we also need to add 69B. What we can also do is say that 10A plus B is equal to, okay, on the one hand, um, 10a obviously, then what we're going to do is we're going to um, subtract 69b from it and add it, meaning we're going to get 70b overall, so plus 70b, then minus 69b. The divisibility really doesn't change, this last part is divisible by 69, so that's good. And what you're going to notice here is that we get a spicy factor of 10, meaning our divisibility rule can also be written as 10 times and then a plus 7b minus 69b. And this looks way more tame and I can tell a crackhead immediately if a number is divisible by 69 or not. And with immediately I mean um, it takes a bunch of seconds. but. We can get there better than with these two algorithms that we find here. So what's the algorithm to determine if numbers divisible by 69 or not right now? What you're going to do is you're going to take your first part, so 138 turns into 13. Okay, this is the first part, our A, and then we are going to add 7 times our last digit to it. 7 times 8 is going to give us 56. Ah, 13 plus 56 is going to give us something very nice. And 69 is obviously divisible by 69, and hence we are done. And this algorithm is always going to work, which is pretty fantastic. But there's still a different way, okay, to get a divisibility rule for 69, and this is just making use of the fact that 69 is a composite number. Namely, if we take a look at 138 divided by 69, we can turn 69 into its prime factorization. Namely, 138 divided by and all of us know the prime factorization of 69 immediately, namely it's 3 times 23. Meaning 138 is only divisible by 69 if and only if it's divisible by 3 and divisible by 23. Divisibility by 3 is an easy matter, namely you are going to take the digit sum of the original number, 138 going to give you 4 plus 8 is 12 and if this digit sum is divisible by 3 then the original number is also divisible by 3 and 12 is divisible by 3, hence the original number is 2. Now what about divisibility by 23? Well, we can go the same route as we did up here. Now, what we can do is we can say, okay, every number is composed um, of the form 10a plus some b, meaning we are going to add and subtract something from this equation such that we get some kind of 23 here, okay? So our 10a is going to be preserved, then what we're going to do is we're going to add, now we can go to routes once again, we can either add um, 22, okay, b, giving us 23b, and then we can also subtract it once again, or we can go the other way where we are going to subtract 23b and we are going to add it to the whole expression, giving us 24 here. But this really doesn't make a huge difference, this way is even better because it's going to give you a better expression here and we're going to deal with an easier number when it comes to our last digit. Now what you're going to notice, we're going to get a common factor of 2 once again, giving us, um, if we factor it out, 2 times 5a minus and then we're going to get 11b plus 23b. This right here is our divisibility rule for 23 and yeah, I mean, uh, it's nearly as ugly as the one that we got up here, but I mean it does work. This right here is still the best algorithm you can find, it's, it's, it's the easiest one, at least the easiest one I could come up with, but this right here is also valid. Let us go through the divisibil divisibility rule for 23. I mean we're going to take 5 times a, 5 times 13, so 138 is going to turn into 65 and then we're going to subtract 8 times 11 from it, which is 88. Subtracting these, so from 65 to 88 we need 23, but with a negative sign in front, but this negative sign really doesn't matter. Now our numbers uh, algorithm is divisible by 23, meaning our original number is also divisible by 23. And yeah, this basically settles it. Those are three 
the visibility rules for number 69. And if we could come up with um, 66 more of these divisibility rules, then we would have 69 divisibility rules for 69. Just as a little added bonus, we are going to take a look at the divisibility rule for 420, just because I want to add a bit of spice and dankness to this video. Now, what about 420? Hmm. If you want to see if a number is divisible by 420, it gets a bit more complicated here. If you try to use this algorithm that we got here, it's going to turn into something very messy very quickly, just because of the fact that if we were to, to decompose it, we would need to add and subtract something, which is going to give us 420 in, in the process. But if you take a look at our single standing B, we are going to get an odd number out of it. Doesn't matter, either 419 or negative 421. Thing with that is that those two don't share any factors, 10a and 421 or 419. Meaning overall, what we're going to get is a very ugly divisibility rule where we have to take 10 times the part that is at the front and subtract 400 something or add 400 something times the last digit to it. This really is not a good divisibility rule. We don't want that. But we can go the same route as we did here and take a look at the prime factorization or just the factorization in general in terms of um, just numbers where we know the divisibility rules basically. Now let's say we got 840 okay, and we want to see if it's divisible by 420. Now 420 is obviously divisible by 10 because it has a zero here. And we know, yeah, divisibility by 10 is very easy to verify. Then we are going to get 42. 42 is 6 times 7. And 6 as its prime factorization is going to be 2 times 3. Meaning we get 840 divided by 10 times 2 times 3 times 7. Meaning to verify if a number is divisible by 420, the dank number, the weak number, we need to check if it's an even number. 840 is. If it's divisible by 10, obviously, because we have a zero at the back. If it's divisible by 3, meaning we need to check the digit sum, 8 plus 4 is going to give us 12, which is divisible by 3, hence the original number is 2. And we need to check if it's divisible by 7. Divisibility by 7 is something that I have derived before, linked down there in the description to the corresponding video. What you are basically going to do is you are going to take a number, 840, then you are going to leave the first part how it is, just like we did with our 10a something here. So meaning we are going to get 84 and then we are going to subtract two times the last digit from it. Two times zero is going to give us zero, meaning 84. You can either see now that it's divisible by seven because this would be 12, okay? 84 divided by seven is 12. Or you can go through the algorithm yet again. Meaning what you are going to do is you are going to take away the first digit. Then what you are going to do is you are going to subtract two times the last digit from it, meaning eight. Eight minus eight is zero and zero is obviously divisible by every natural number except for zero. And yeah. This is the algorithm to determine if a number is divisible by 420 or not. This is pretty dank and I believe the video and the algorithms were pretty nice that we covered. And if you want to see more content like this, if you're interested in more number theory, divisibility rules and just elementary number theory in general, then I invite you to try out the contents of today's sponsor Prey and who I can't enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. Now Prey is creating some pretty nice content over on their website. I'm not certain if they cover the theory of Jens constant 69 as in-depth as we do on this channel over on Brilliant, but I'm pretty certain that it's going to pop up from time to time during their interactive courses. Speaking of which, with their nearly 70 interactive courses in all topics STEM, be it mathematics, physics, computer science, all the way over to philosophy and even search engines, it's crazy what they cover with their courses, you can learn something new every day. And all of this is going to be supported by a very hands-on approach. Hands-on meaning that you can play around with figurines, you can transform triangles such that you can see um, how the interior angles are going to act under transformation on spot. It's just amazing how all of it works out and how smooth the animations are and how flexible the graphs are and how much stuff you can um, just change and vary all the parameters and just see how everything works with your own two eyes and trying it all out with your own two hands. It's seriously an amazing experience that you won't find anywhere else on the internet. And the best thing is 
they add new courses nearly each and every month. And if there's an older course, they always brush up on these older courses by adding new animations, just new content in, in general. And all of their courses are being created by experts in their field, meaning it has a very, very strong educational background. All of the courses, they really give you a feeling for what you need to learn and all the intuition behind it. And if this feels like it's something for you, then definitely make sure to try out the link at the top of the description, brain.org slash maps. With it, you're going to get free access to a big portion of brain already. And more importantly, the first 100 people to actually make use of the link get 20% of an annual premium subscription, which is a freaking great deal considering how much content they have available on their website. Never going to run out of content virtually ever if you try a brain. So yeah, definitely make sure to try it out and support the channel as well. If you did enjoy this very nice video, then I would love for you to subscribe to the channel and to share the video around. Other than that, if you're interested in woodworking, if you want to see me work my wood, then definitely also go over to Flemmy's Wood, my new woodworking channel. And check out sandwich.eu for handcrafted wooden products. Now until next video, I wish you guys a flammable day. Ciao!